It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MEDPROJECT or visit medproject.org. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. So this murder happened overnight between April 21st and 22nd of 2016. There were not arrests for 19 months between the murder and the arrests, and they still have not gone to trial. Yeah. So we're going on five years since the murders, and the first trial in this case is not scheduled until August of this year. So just as a little bit of a reference, yeah, five years. It's slow. It's going to be over five years since the deaths. So I think we need to take out the right, like, don't let people deny the right to a speedy trial. <laughs> so they just have to have a speedy trial. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this was the largest criminal investigation in history in Ohio. Yeah, it's it's their biggest like case. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this area, Fruit Loop. Uh, so Piketon, Ohio, um, the population is around 2,000. Um Pike County population is around 30,000, and it's about 90 miles east of Cincinnati. But it's a very, um, I don't want to say isolated, but it's a lot of farmland. It's Rural. kind of, I yeah. can't even say that word. Rural. My tongue just goes. I know you were dodging it. Yeah, my tongue goes, nope. Yeah. We're not going there. See, we learned in, in school, urban and rural. <laughs> yeah, I can't do, I, I just... I can't get the rural. <laughs> you know See, it? Like, rural. Rural. See, I can't do it. It's like, a, okay, but anyways, before I embarrass myself further, I'm going to say right now, if, um, and I really hope you guys stick with us on this. This case is intriguing. Um, but just a word of caution. You might want to pause the podcast right now and either go to our Facebook or Twitter page and pull up the tree of who's who. If not, Google Wagner Roden murder and try to get like a drop down picture menu because there are eight victims, four defendants, and some of the victims have the same name. Yeah. There are juniors and seniors and yep. two Hannahs. So we're going to go through now and try to piece it together for you so that it makes sense once we get into the crimes and motive and everything else. Yep. So the victims, uh, were Christopher Roden Sr. Um, he was the dad. He's 40 years old. His wife, ex-wife, I mean, they were divorced or whatever, but um, Dana Manley Roden, uh, she was 38. And like I said, that's Christopher's ex-wife. Um, they had divorced, but they still lived on the same road. Mm -hmm. um, so Clarence Frankie Roden, he's... Referred to as Frankie on most stuff you'll see um, is Christopher and Dana's son, and his fiance was Hannah Gilly, with an H, and she was killed beside him. Yep, she they were in the bed together, and they were both shot and killed. Yep. So this is where we have the two Hannahs. Hannah Gilly is Frankie's fiance. They have one child together. Then you have Hannah Roden, who is 19, and that is Christopher, Chris Roden Sr., and Dana's daughter, also Frankie's sister. Yes. <laughs> get If you didn't heed my advice 90 seconds ago, pause this and go get you a drop-down tree. Yep. Okay, keep going, Fruit Loop. So Christopher Roden Jr. is Christopher and Dana's son. They call him Little Chris. Um, he was 16. Kenneth Roden is Christopher's older brother, 
And by Christopher, I mean Christopher Sr. Kenneth Roden is Christopher Sr.'s older brother. Um, and then Gary Roden is Christopher and Kenneth's cousin. So they're all members of the same family. Every one of the victims. Yeah. Two generations, except, you know, the kids they spared. There were three kids that were found inside the residences that were not harmed during the massacres. Yeah. So we have Kylie Roden, who was four days old. This is the daughter of Hannah Roden, who is Chris and Dana's daughter. Yeah. She is the mother of one of the suspect's child. Oh, gosh. This is so confusing, y'all. I'm sorry. It's, it, get, get the list. <laughs> so the, one of the suspects, Jake Wagner, she has a kid with him, and, Sophia. Right. And that's going to come in because there are going to be certain names you hear more often. And Hannah Roden and Jake Wagner are kind of the center of this because this is where the motive that authorities think originated yeah is a custody dispute yeah so the other kids that were in the house the four day old was found i think in her mother's arms um you had ruger roden who is the six month old son of frankie and hannah gilly then you have bentley roden who was three and that was frankie's child from another relationship yep now let's talk about the accused people so the accused are Billy Wagner the third. Um, this is all the, one family. This is the dad, um, Angela Wagner, who is Billy's wife. George Wagner the fourth, which is Billy and Angela's son. Jake Wagner, who is Billy and Angela's other son. Right. So that's everybody. So just to summarize, Chris Sr. and Dana, who were killed, are the parents of Frankie, little Chris, and Hannah Roden. Kenneth Roden and Gary Roden are not members of that immediate family. They are, it's a brother and a cousin. Then you have Sophia Wagner which is, like we said, Jake Wagner and Hannah Roden's child. She was three years old at the time. And she wasn't in the house. She was not in the house. She was with her dad, who actually picked her up a day before the murders, and that was a day before he was supposed to pick her up. Yeah. He was supposed to have picked her up on the day of the murders. So she was with them the night that the murders happened, but we do not know where she was. Although the grandma, Billy's mother, Frederica Wagner, is they're probably one of the the Wagner family is probably one of your more rich families in town. Yeah. So they had money. The suspects, all four of them, the Wagners had the the grandmother owns a, a farm there in pike county and she, what does she raise like show horses and yeah i think livestock different kind of animals or whatever and like uh, some really breeds, fancy pigs fancy horses and pigs and i don't know has some type of breed of dog she bred or something yeah so essentially before we kind of get any further now that we've told you who everybody is I'm trying to think of the, like the best way to do this. So essentially Jake Wagner, who is now in custody for one of the four charged with these murders, he started a relationship with Hannah Roden when she was 13 and he was nearly 18. Yeah. They started dating. Now, this is a really, really small town and we've seen that a lot of the people associated with this case have had their children in their teens. So... I mean, there are teen pregnancy, obviously a problem all over the country. It just seems like maybe in these more smaller areas, it's just kind of what happens. I don't know, but it seems like everybody had their kids super young in this area. Yeah. Um, so first of all, when Jake Wagner was arrested for all this, they tacked on a criminal sexual conduct charge, even though none of the parents before the murders ever raised any alarms. Because they found out he was, she was way too young. When the baby was born, 
um, he was over 18 and she was, what, 15? Uh, yeah, well, I think he's like, what, seven years older than her or something? Yeah, and so they tacked that charge on because, I mean, you know, they planned that pregnancy. Yeah. That pregnancy was planned. Yeah. So there's a, there's a couple other people uh, that we, well, one other lady that we left out is Rita Newcomb, who is Angela's mother. Um, so she'll come into play here because um, there was some yeah. stuff. Yeah, there were some charges and, and both yeah. the grandmas were arrested at some point. So as far as the accused, they had some priors. They had some prior criminal history. Yep. So we're talking about the four, the Wagners, that are in jail now for the murders of the rodents. Yeah, so in 2001, Billy Wagner was convicted of improper handling of a firearm. Uh, 2002, he was convicted of receiving stolen property. And then in 2012, Billy and Angela Wagner were convicted of receiving stolen property. And I'll tell you, just in what we've done in the last few days, this family is a little weird in their need to do everything together. Um, some of the people in town said it was almost cult-like. They just never did anything without the other. And I really think there's some big control issue with these babies, yeah. the grandkids. Um, people around town on the documentary last night, one girl said that the Wagners were seen as kind of prestigious yeah, because they had money. Yeah. So I guess it, the families knew each other. They were all very close, it seemed. Yeah. Um, in fact, Angela Wagner has said that her husband and Chris Sr., um, were like brothers, but obviously something went south. Yeah. So speaking of the other family members arrested, you were talking about Rita Newcomb, who was Angela's mother. Yep. Um, she, there was a custody dispute. And before we get into these arrests, I think it's probably going to be easier if we just sort of explain the custody dispute. So Jake and Hannah were living with each other so they would spend time at Hannah's parents' house. They would go over to Jake's parents' house or Jake's house. And so they kind of floated between the two residences and lived together. And um, so apparently Hannah wanted to end the relationship with Jake. She had put some cryptic things on her Facebook that made her friends think in hindsight that maybe there was some abuse going on there with Jake, and she had made some statements. I think, in fact, that's one of the things that a defense attorney wanted to keep out of the upcoming trial is that statements or proof that he had ever hurt a member of that family prior to the murders. So it seemed like Jake really wanted to work things out. Yeah. According to people that knew them. So they broke up, I believe, in April, and by August, Hannah is pregnant. Hmm. This is before the murders happen. They break up. Hannah is seeing a couple of other guys. By August, she's pregnant with number two. And at that point, she was not sure who the father of this baby was. She didn't know if it was the guy she was with at the time, who was Charlie Gilly, who is one of the victim, Hannah Gillies, brother there's so many um yeah yeah I'll be glad when we get past this introduction phase because I'm like confusing myself over here yeah so getting back to Rita Newcomb who was Angela's mother she took a plea from felony to misdemeanor for obstructing official business um with all that child custody stuff she forged a birth certificate that was involved in the custody dispute over Sophia Wagner uh, that was in April of 2016, and that was 19 days before the murders. Mm -hmm. Angela asked her from jail to lie about notarizing the custody documents and not testifying against them. And she was also caught talking to Jake. Yeah, Angela, Angela was. was. And yeah. we can't figure that out. We don't know if it was maybe like through the phone relaying messages it doesn't seem like it would be mail because they, they read her mail and I don't think she's supposed to have contact with somebody who's like a co-conspirator or whatever. Yeah. I don't know for sure. And there are some things, guys, that we do not have down pat. So if you hear us make a mistake and you're very familiar with this, let us know. 
um, because we're not perfect. <laughs> Even though we think we are, we're not perfect, and we make mistakes. So, Rita originally pled not guilty, but changed her plea, saying that lying wasn't the Christian thing to do, and she couldn't do it anymore. She was charged with obstruction of official business, a misdemeanor, perjury, and forgery charges were dropped. It makes me think maybe, I mean, obviously they've asked her to testify against the family. Yeah. So we don't know what capacity or what she may know. Like, it's weird that, I mean, Angela, she knows she's being recorded. Yeah. And you're going to say that knowing they're listening? Yeah, and it's almost like, was she willing to kind of take the punch and just get that out to her mom? Yeah. Or do you get comfortable in jail and just forget you're being recorded? Yeah, I say she doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, her goose is cooked. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe she just didn't want her mom, you know, to, who knows? Yeah, so now she doesn't have phone or mail privileges. Or she didn't. I don't know if she's got it back by now. but Yeah, we're not sure. But they did take away those priv- privileges when she broke the, the rules. Yep. So if only she'd have had her own cell phone in prison. Like exactly. So. <laughs> Where's means at? Yeah, come on. Get means in here. Um, so Frederica Wagner, who you said before, is George, it's Billy's mother. Uh, she runs Flying W Farms. Um, we told you she raises livestock and horses and stuff. She was charged for perjury and obstruction of justice. Those charges were later dropped. Uh, she was accused of lying during the grand jury testimony, saying she bought bulletproof vests on Amazon, but actually got them on eBay. Uh, she says she bought them to protect her son since he knew the rodents. Right, but initially police thought that she had bought them for for the family to wear during the murders. Yeah. But the charges were dropped in June of 2019. So, And, and she was kind of a pillar in her community. Um, She's very wealthy, and on the documentary we, we watched last night, it talked about how she would bring, uh, because this is in Appalachia, and the poverty rate, I believe, is 20% or more in this area. So a lot of kids go hungry, and she would do meals at her home yep. for kids that to make sure that, that at least when they left there, they had a full belly. Yeah. Um, so they found the bulletproof vest in a room where Billy had been staying because he was working on that farm. Yep. At, um, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, investigators also had recordings and text messages against the Wagners. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, it's it stuff's trickled out in this case, but largely it's reminiscent of Lori and Chad in that um, they've been very selective in what's been put out there. Yeah. Uh, not much at all. There's been some things that kind of has has come out over the years, but um, I'm really really looking forward to this trial in August. I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah. And, and there's going to be three additional trials. This is going to be a big case. It's a lot of information. Right. And it's th- like four terabytes. Yeah, it's crazy. Stuff. Yeah. And, and we think it's definitely going to take us a few episodes to get a very good grip on this case, at least to where we get current. Yeah. Because there's so much that's happened. Yeah. Four years, almost five years, we're trying to play catch up. So, yep. So, let's look at the background of the Wagners. Um, So, the Wagners own a lot of property. Uh, Like we said, Frederica owns that Flying W Farms. It's like 2,000 acres. Um, She has some land. uh, I want to say it's like 1,700 acres. Uh, And I don't know if that's included in that 2000 or not, but it's like high priced worth over like $4 million is what they said on that documentary last night. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I bet grandma's funding the defense. Yeah, for real. Um, So in 1991, Frederica was accused in three federal lawsuits of racketeering as her advertised top-notch pigs were found to not meet the standard of fitness represented. The case never went to trial. Yeah. That is the weirdest thing ever. Mm Mm-hmm. They can tell you your pigs are too large. <laughs> They're not top notch. Uh, um, yeah. I think it's like standard of fitness is like maybe she was saying these were pure blooded Vietnamese pot belly pigs and they were just like random pot belly pigs. Like mutt pot belly. I don't know. It seems like maybe she was falsely advertising them as something they weren't. I gotcha. Yeah. I don't think that they were saying the pigs were fat. <laughs> <laughs> wonder, <laughs> wonder sky's how, blue pigs are fat <laughs> i wonder <laughs> sorry how, you, loop. how do you check the nationality of a pig i know it's like do you do dna swabs and say this is a dud they i know what they use ancestry they use <laughs> they check those 
<laughs> and your ancestors were from Europe and <laughs> yours yeah. were from a, a mud pile in Iowa. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, this is how we normally do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so at the time of the murders, Frederica was selling a trademark breed of dogs that she created. And that was, they were like going for like 1800 to 2100 bucks. Sheesh. See, I, okay. I could never pay that much for a dog because it would be my luck. Like it would get hit by a car the next day. Oh yeah. Twenty one hundred dollars. Yep. Crazy. You would be at the vet. Oh yeah. <laughs> you and your little cat over there. <laughs> oh my gosh, that cat broke me the first yeah. month. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing today? I gotta take the cat to the vet. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh so November of twenty thirteen, Sophia Wagner was born. This is Jake and Hannah's baby. Yep. We're just gonna review a little bit here, guys. So Jake and Hannah lived together until two thousand fifteen. Like we said, they floated back and forth between the Wagner home and the Roden home. Um, Jake says they broke up because he was working a lot and didn't have time uh, to spend with her. I think he might have been driving a truck maybe that time or something, maybe. Yeah, he and his brother both um, were co-owners of an 18-wheeler. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, you think about Hannah. She is a kid, and she's maybe 15, 16, and he wanted her to be a stay-at-home mom. And she's a child. So yep. she didn't want to be tied down. Yep. And she broke up with him. Yeah. And we it's, think for other reasons, too. There's obviously some control issues for sure. Yeah. And it's 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 hard. I mean, I have a niece who had a kid at 16. And you're not... And, and some people may be totally different. But I'm saying the 16-year-olds I've been around, they're not ready to be a parent. No. Um, there's a lot that goes on with raising a kid, so... And it's yeah. just not something that these kids think of. And it just, I was just shocked to hear that, that they planned this pregnancy. Yeah. And the scary thing with all this, all these cases we've covered, there's one common denominator. Well, mm-hmm. there's probably more than one, but is divorce. Yeah. And like we see here now, Sophia spending time with within between each family. Now, they weren't married. Um, no. And, and in fact, she had posted something on her Instagram or Facebook and it was a picture of uh, Jacob Roden kissing Sophia. Jake Roden? Oh, well, gosh. See, there I go. Uh, sorry, Jake Wagner. And the post is a picture of him kissing a, a small Sophia. So I would say it's a few months after her birth. And she says, tomorrow makes four years I've been with Jake. Blessed. A year from tomorrow, I will be marrying my best friend. Yeah. And that's what Hannah Roden put. And I would say Sophia's maybe four months in this picture. Yeah. So August of 2015, Hannah is pregnant again, and DNA test confirmed Jake is not the father. But the DNA test was done after uh, Hannah was murdered. Yep. yep. So that's the thing is she had just given birth. She was only four days postpartum. So they probably had only been home a day or two. Yeah. Since she had the baby to when the murders happened. Um, and that baby was found in her arms. Uh, I, I just... All the babies, they said, were covered in blood and, and just unimaginable. I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful they didn't hurt the babies. The three-year-old uh, son of Frankie um, definitely has had some struggles since then. He thought his dad was playing zombies. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I don't know how you look at a, another human being holding a what six month old and a four day old yeah and just shoot him in the head i I, multiple times i mean just vicious yeah yep so six days after the murders jake files for custody of sophia and was awarded custody in may of 2016 yeah and there was a family court attorney and that that gave a comment to a news article i don't remember which one but that family court attorney said that it was almost unheard of that in six days you would get all this paperwork together for custody, which, in their opinion, just says they've been working on this for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the same thing. George the Fourth, who is the, the older brother, he had a ch- his son, he had his ex-wife, Tabitha, sign over custody to him. So it's... A common theme. Yeah, something something's not right there. It's yeah, it's very strange. Um I mean we we talked 
the it's it's just weird. It's almost like, um, I mean, obviously she had what two boys. So yeah. Angela had two boys. There wasn't a girl, right? But it's almost like they're obsessed with these kids. Yeah, like, and like they didn't want to share. Yeah, and wanting them uh, yeah. to themselves. So I think um, uh, the the document that she signed was identical to what Jake produced. For my brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Custody of Sophia. Yeah. Um, and the papers gave custody to Angela in the event something happened to Jake. Or Rat, yeah, George the fourth instead of the kids' mothers, which yeah. is it's it's weird. What they found was that both custody documents had been printed from a laptop that was owned by Jake Wagner, but it seems like they've proven mostly Angela used it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So um, let's see here. Um, if you if you think about like people don't know this, but. Like, printers kind of have a memory. Um, I know anytime we've worked with companies um, like printers, they want to want everything wiped out. Um, I, I don't ask me how, but uh, so I think there's, like, information that they can get uh, out of that somehow. Yeah. Um, there's no telling. They can tell literally when trash bags were produced by the ridges on them yeah so what they can do and find out about things is just amazing digital evidence is like crazy yeah so we talked about hannah posting that she was planning to get married in 2015 and i was looking around on their social media accounts and her pinterest page was all wedding ideas there was nothing else and she and jake also had rings tattooed on their finger um i guess to show their commitment before they were married but it, and Jake says in his affidavit that he and Hannah were physical with each other in, in a sexual way throughout that summer. So that's why he was thinking that the new baby might be his. Right. But yeah. later that summer, she had broken up with this Charlie Gilly guy yeah. um, and then entered into another relationship with a third guy named Corey. And that kind of broke Jake. Um, according to people that knew both of them, that was sort of when it was clear to him that it wasn't, she didn't want to be in a relationship. She just didn't want to be with him. Yeah. It sounded like it wasn't healthy. No, it's not healthy if you're 13 and you're dating somebody who's almost 18, uh, just in a general sense. And then the fact that he's an adult and he's allowing this girl to plan a pregnancy with him. It's, it's all messed up. Yeah. Yeah. All crazy. Um, so Chris, little Chris had told a friend not too long before the murder or not too long before the breakup that Hannah was in a really bad relationship, but she felt stuck. Yep. So, um, Hannah finds out in August that she's pregnant with her second child and it's very unexpected. And the three guys were the possible fathers, Jake Wagner, Charlie Gilly, or this third guy, Corey. Corey. Jake was telling everybody he thought he was the father. But according to Jake, leading up to the murders, Hannah wasn't allowing them to see Sophia. Yeah, I think, um, I think Ohio is, uh, the father has no rights to the child at all. It's kind of like here. 
Yeah, it's and that's insane. Yeah. Um, they really need to change laws to protect dads who want to be in their kids' lives but maybe have a vindictive significant other in some cases yeah. who use kids as pawns. I've seen it both ways. Yeah. I've seen it where it's good that the ch- that the dad doesn't have any rights being abusive or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's a, that's a tough one to... Uh, yeah, it is hard. Out. But so... I guess things are pretty quiet. And then eventually in April of 2016, Hannah delivers the new baby, Kylie. Yep. And there's no father listed on the birth certificate. Right. Um, so we, we told you after the murders, Jake filed for custody. He also filed for custody of the new baby because he didn't know if he was a dad or not. Right. And he, he also said he wanted to keep the sisters together. Yep. Um, so, um, it was two months after her death, Hannah's death, that the paternity test proved that the baby is Charlie Gillies. Uh, he got custody of baby Kylie after the murders and there's nothing else about her, which is good. Um, also about Sophia after the murders, um, the only thing that, that was said about her was that she was safe in a neighboring County and that's kind of all we know. Yeah. But you had a good point about parental rights in this situation. Yeah. Uh, she she can't be adopted unless he gives up his parental rights or unless he is convicted of this crime, then the courts can take his parental rights if that's what they choose to do. Right. But so right now she still has to, you know, possibly be in foster care right now because uh, not adopted. Um, yeah. Because he's, I mean, he's not been convicted yet, so. So let's move on to the murders. Um, And and as we progress in this episode by episode, we're going to jump back and forth because there are things that are relevant, but only when you have a grip on it. So we know that investigators have kind of figured out that these murders were planned starting in January of that year. So the murders were on April 22nd of 2016. They started planning them in January. And so what were they doing? They're saying they study their sleeping habits, the land layout, security camera locations, pets. Um, yeah, so they were doing tons of surveillance. And the thing you have to remember is that these families were friends. And obviously, Jake is going to be in a lot of their houses when things are good because he's the father of Hannah's baby. And so I'm sure on a basic level, Jake kind of knew routines and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, but they were watching them and monitoring social media and that kind of stuff. It, um, yeah, they were, they hacked into their social media, right? They did. Uh, we found out that Jake was hacking into several of the Roden social medias. I mean, notably Hannah. And that kind of comes in as maybe motive later because essentially Hannah is talking to Tabitha, who is the mother of the brother's little boy. And... Remember, this is the woman who's already signed over her custody to the to brother, George, to the George fourth. Wagner. Yep. And she says to this woman, like, essentially, they're going to have to kill me first. I'm not signing over anything. Yep. We know that Jake saw this because there were a ton of personal messages found on the computer Angela uses on an Excel spreadsheet, I believe. And That's there were like, crazy. I think there was like 500 messages that she had saved. So they had been watching their social media for a very long time. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And he's charged with that actually. And and what here's the crazy thing. He didn't stop looking at her social media until like a year after they were dead. That's just weird. Is that not weird? I mean, what are you monitoring? I don't know. I mean, maybe just I mean, is he just looking back through pictures or something? I don't know. It's just very strange. Yeah. Um you know, but at the same time, if he's not friends with some of her friends, it's easy for him to hop on and see what they're saying amongst themselves about all this. Maybe that was part of the motive yeah, where be. he could see what other people in the town were saying because it was two years until they were arrested and they weren't really on radar publicly for a while. Yeah. So, um, it, uh, it was uh, around the, the homes were, it was a wooded area. Yeah, they're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So it talked about security camera locations and stuff like that. Um, I was thinking, 
what if he helped install some of those? I mean, that's a good theory. Like, what if he, that way he would know where they were. And yeah. I think we have somewhere where they had the uh, RF locators. Yeah, they brought RF locators. That's on the uh, evidence list, wh- which kind of alerts you to when there's a recording device nearby. Yeah, there's like several different ways those things work. One of them, uh, it will, depending on which one you have, it will um, like flash a red light. And that lets you see camera lenses looking at you. Mm-hmm. So um, that way, and it it does detect uh, like um, megahertz signals, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they definitely planned these murders. Um, I, I hate to say very well uh, because ultimately they were they were arrested and they have evidence against them. But then again, two years. Yeah. Um. Yep. They did enough to to delay it at least. Yeah. So the weapons used was a 22 caliber long rifle, a 40 caliber gun, 30 caliber, and a 22 caliber. Um, there were shell casings found at the crime scene. Um, they were um, recovered from one of the Wagner's properties, which matched the shell casings found at the crime scene. Right. It, but they had what, what do they call them, brass catchers? Yeah. They had bought and attached brass catchers to the guns, which... It's supposed to to collect all the spent casings, which is just, you know, preventing being caught. I think they did find one shell casing under a crib in Hannah's room. Um, That'll all come in, you know, with with the trial. But they were very careful. I'm going to tell you the other one that gets me is the dogs. Because they said that they had ferocious dogs and hunting dogs. Right. Um, So, I don't know if you've ever been around a hunting dog. Not really. Those dogs bark and bark. Really? Oh, yeah. When I lived in West Virginia, we had one hunting dog. Literally, like, it wouldn't hush. Like, when there was movement in the woods, those dogs were, like, crazy barking. Yeah. Wow. So, But that also kind of let investigators know that these people might have been known to the, to the victims because... Um, Leonard Manley, who is, uh, that's Dana's father, I believe. He said those dogs would have eaten up anybody. So he originally said it has to be somebody who knew them. Yeah. Cause. Um, and if you think about it, Jake lived at that house some. Yeah. So the dogs know his scent. Uh, he may know what their favorite treats are, that yep. kind of thing. Yeah. How do you think they got by the surveillance? I, if, if they didn't, because they can't cut it off. That would have probably alerted them if they have an app on their phone or something. Yeah. So I know a little bit about video surveillance. I've installed several, um, several ones in businesses and um, residents. So for me, it's, it's difficult to avoid a camera because simply because the, um, The projection of the camera, like how far it records out, like am I in the shot or am I not in the shot? So there's no real definite way to know that. Um, Like I have security cameras at my home. I know where by looking at it, I know where I can stand where I'm not on camera. If that yeah. makes sense. No, it does. I, I, I'm um, going to test that theory out with mine tomorrow. Yeah. So <laughs> you know where you can stand and where you can't. Um, the other one, did did he install an app? Did he have an app that would let him know? But still, if you're going to disable the camera, it's still going to record you when you first get to the camera. Yeah, I don't know. That's And I'm sure they might know what happened. Um, and they're just not letting... Yeah. that out um, it's very hard to dodge a camera yeah so i'm a little curious as to how um i don't think they would have had time to go in and delete stuff or whatever who knows yeah because trail cameras are not wired they're all wireless oh. they could have had wired cameras on their houses um i haven't really seen uh, a picture of it but um trail cameras are wireless like you can stick them anywhere oh um, okay like you can uh, strap them to a tree like Gotcha. Um, I don't can, know much about trail cameras. All I know is yeah. I clicked on something that was like creepy pictures from trail cameras, and I'll never do that again. Yeah, it's like deer and bear and stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, it's like zombie and like ghosts and oh, cool. all this crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so um, 
Well, let's see where we are. So, poor Bobby Joe Manley. For real. I do not know this woman. I want to find her and hug her. Yeah. She, okay, so this is who initially found the first bodies. And this is, Bobby Joe is Dana's sister. Yep. And um, so she normally feeds the animals at Chris Sr. and Gary's house. Remember, Chris Sr. and Dana divorced. They were living apart, but near each other because they were on good terms. Yep. So she goes like she normally does in the morning at 7.49 a.m. She gets there, and she comes to feed the dogs. And she has a key. The door was locked. So she uses the key, and then she goes in and sees they're both dead. So she makes the initial 911 call, and she's panicked, and... And th- she she thought they had been beaten to death. So it kind of makes you visualize, not that it's pleasant, but it probably wasn't recognized. It, they, they probably were not super recognizable after taking point blank to the face. Yeah. We know Chris Sr. Um, was shot the most, which was nine times. Yeah, and he was worked over pretty good. So they don't know. Did... Obviously, he had some defensive wounds. Yeah, he had a shot on his forearm. Yep. Like, maybe he put his hand up. And I think he had some bruising. So, there was maybe a sign of a struggle. So, right out of the gate, if that that's the first house they went to, they believe, because he was found to be the most decomposed. So, they said it kind of makes sense that he was the first killing. But it sounds like maybe they weren't anticipating them to be awake. Yeah. So, after she found... Um, Chris and Gary, she runs, she calls 911, uh, and I think they tell her, you can hear the call, um, to exit the house. Uh, so she runs next door um, to Frankie and Hannah Gilly's house, and she hears a baby crying, and she finds those two dead. Um, so she removes, remember, there was a three-year-old and a six-month-old. Six month old. Yep. So she takes those kids out to her car. Um, She then calls her brother, James, to go to Dana's house. Right. And he finds those deceased. He finds, yeah. So he sees that uh, Dana and uh, Hannah, Hannah Roden, are dead in that house. Little Chris comes in. He's in that house dead. But unfortunately, authorities do not find him until later that day. And we've discussed this, like, I can understand why James wouldn't find him, because I'm I'm sure, like... He didn't linger. No, like, he sees that. I would exit as well, because 911 told Bobby Joe to exit, too. Right, don't get out stay, of the house. Get out of the house, don't stay in there. But for me, the police going in, you should clear all rooms. One, if there's an active shooter still on the property... Yes. Um, and two, I mean, that's that's your job. You're to clear the scene before firemen can come in, EMS can come in. Like, you know, your job the is to coroner. clear the scene. Yeah. It, well, here's the thing. Little Chris, was he's 16, so they verified he did not come to school that day. Initially, before they found Little Chris, the town was buzzing that could it have been Little Chris that killed his whole family. Yeah. And it wasn't until, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I want to say it was like after one o'clock, that they went back in and found him dead beside the bed. Yeah, like, How do you miss crazy. a dead human? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, it said he was laying next to his bed. Yeah. Uh, and I, I get that, but you still should clear the room. I would think that you would, when you go in a house and there are murder victims who have been viciously murdered at that would you not look under beds to make sure a shooter isn't hiding? And how do you miss a dead teenager laying by his bed for hours? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. No. Uh Uh-uh. So then um, another call comes into 911, and it is Donald Stone, who's a cousin, and he finds Kenneth, which is Chris Sr.'s brother, dead and his I think it was a camper top yeah it was just a camp like a fifth wheel camper on some land yep. and he I think he was the only victim that was alone yeah um and yeah so they in all four crime scenes 32 gunshot wounds between eight victims that's crazy um there was no signs of forced entry which this is such a tiny tiny little town I remember in the 80s here we didn't lock our doors at night yeah. Um, 
And so I'm sure with that small town and the fact that they all probably have weapons and it's it's a quiet town where nothing ever happens, with no signs of forced entry at any place, it just kind of makes me think they they kept their doors. Unlocked. Yeah, I mean, they, they could have. I mean, they could have, you know, they, Jake could have had keys made. We don't know. Yeah. Um, but I, that's a, like... That's what I, last thing I do, I walk the house and make sure all the doors are locked. Oh, I do too. Um, and I was sitting here thinking, how did nobody wake up? Well, I watched a video on YouTube today because I'm not super familiar with guns. They terrify me. Um, but there was a 22, a video of a guy shooting a, a, a 22 with and without a suppressor. And I was super shocked at how quiet the suppressor was. So it makes sense. Yeah. If I'm in a deep sleep, I probably would not wake up to that sound. Yeah. Uh, I think clearly Chris Sr. surprised them, but it, it seems like maybe everybody else was in bed, although I kind of have a theory maybe little Chris wasn't just because he was found beside his bed. Something got him up. If they'd have shot him asleep in the bed, I think he would have been in the bed. Yeah, that or he was hiding. It could be. I mean. It's just such a sad thought either way, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. It, so, I mean, we've covered a lot of stuff, and if you've haven't heard of this case yet don't get overwhelmed oh yeah i'm um, still overwhelmed and i've been eyeball deep in it for two days but once you yeah. get the names down pat and it's there are just focus names in this case and every victim is important it's just there are about four people really that make up the bulk of the motive and yeah. the, to me and and the case yeah exactly um so our next one, we can kind of get into investigation a little bit um, and uh, kind of pick up from there. Um, but just so you're introduced to everybody and kind of understand what's going on. Um, yeah, it's it, it's really a lot. And we're already uh, at 50 minutes. Yeah. So I think instead of jumping into details, like... In between now and Sunday, I think if you guys really super want to learn about this case, um, I've posted a couple of videos as well that gives a really good rundown with visuals uh, that I think might help. But I promise you guys, once you learn all these names, this case is so interesting. Yeah. And it's huge because we're going to have four separate trials. I think a lot of the evidence obviously is going to be the same. But it's just, um, this is a big one. Yeah. And I've told you for, since we started this podcast, if we ever added cases, I really wanted to do this one. Yeah. Um, there's just so many victims. It's a mass shooting. It's just, um, there are family members left behind. Uh, the grandmother, you think about her. She has lost two sons, three grandkids, and a daughter-in-law. Her yeah. whole family's gone almost. Yep. Uh, and she, I felt bad. There's a video of her kind of pleading because for a long time they didn't know anything they didn't know who did anything there were theories in the beginning and we didn't talk about that yeah um, um it they just didn't know who had done these killings so i know some of the theories was it was a mexican cartel because there were some uh marijuana plants growing on the property and not just some i mean it was five hundred thousand dollars worth yeah but that that's just not mexican that's not worth their time yeah. And the other thing is typically when Mexican cartels come in and kill, they kill kids too. They don't care. Yeah. They don't leave anybody alive. It's a statement. Yeah. So, but for a while it was kind of that. Maybe yep. it's drugs. Then it moved to, uh, there was a threat put on Facebook. Uh, apparently Frankie drove like a demolition car. Yep. Demolition a, derby. Yeah. Yep. And his car was pretty high compared to the other cars was expensive and nice and that kind of thing. And um, so I think there was a little bit of some words exchanged and the person that he exchanged words with, it was the most poorly timed thing to put on Facebook ever. But right before the murders, he said something about don't make me go up to union road and take them all out. Yeah. So pretty quickly, once they saw that message, they looked at him and Rolled obviously it out. wasn't, yeah. wasn't him. It was just a very, poorly timed thing to put out there yep um and there was one more theory um I'm trying to think what was the third theory um it was the yeah it was a cartel hit and then um oh the, uh, chris senior had been involved in a road rage thing yep. and i think the person that that he had gotten into an argument with had recently been sentenced in that case i don't really know if it was major or what so those were kind of the three things initially that they looked into because, um, I mean, I don't think at that point anybody would have suspected the Wagners. 
No, and and that's you have the Roden family and extended family, the Manleys, like they they don't know anything. So they don't know who's done what. They don't have any charges. Yeah. Nothing. So they're pleading with anybody who knows anything. I you know, they were saying, I know somebody knows something. And like some of the ladies that spoke on the special last night, they were terrified. Like the whole town. Yeah. Because this didn't happen there. Like this kind of stuff never happened in that town. Mm -hmm. So they were like the families were pleading and the the grandmother. I just felt so bad for her because she lost her sons. And like you said, her grandkids. And she talked about Dana coming and helping take care of her. Yeah. Um, She has some physical, you know, um, problems it's very clear when you see her she's she's got some struggles um but i'm gonna tell you she was at every hearing that first year and then i think it just got to be too much for her yeah um and and you can tell it probably was a job to get there with her physical condition and man she just uh oh i can't imagine can you imagine your kids your grandkids just gone in one night no i mean death uh, these other cases that we've had is you know a couple of one you know one, two, whatever. It's hard enough. Oh, a whole family. But then you throw in eight. Yeah. Eight in one family. It's I, not eight different people, <laughs> like from different families. Yeah. It's like eight people from one family. So. Yeah. They wiped out the yeah. entire two generations. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Haha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Get ready for the ultimate deals at Goat Guns. From Thursday to Monday of the sale, enjoy a free gift with every purchase. You will be the greatest giver this holiday when you give a meticulously crafted miniature gun model. Shop now at GoatGuns.com and make your Cyber Monday unforgettable with Goat Guns.